Hey there, thanks for stopping and not scrolling. In this video, I'm going to tell you why it's a very bad idea for you to build your content home for your plastic surgery practice on rented land. What's rented land? Well, that would be Facebook, Instagram, that'd be LinkedIn, that would be Snapchat, that'd be TikTok, any platform you do not own. You do not own the content, and more importantly, you do not own the audience. Hey everybody, I'm Mark Tennant from marktennant.net, and I help plastic surgery practices like yours create emotional connections with their patients online through video, thereby creating a whole new revenue stream for your practice. Now, as we go through the video, I want you to keep something in mind, and that question is, are you building your content home on rented land? If you are, I'm gonna tell you how to fix it, and we're gonna do that right now. First, a story. A couple of weeks ago, I was at my gym, and that's my gym right there, and that's my treadmill, and I was listening to a YouTube video from a plastic surgeon here in the States, and she was talking about if it had to been for her building exclusively on social media, her audience over the past five years, that her practice probably wouldn't be surviving this pandemic. And she also went on to say that email wasn't worth her time because it just wasn't working for her and her practice. And she said, because people don't open emails. And truthfully, she couldn't be more wrong. Believe me, people open emails if it has content that speaks to them, if it's answering questions, if it's adding value, and yes, even if it entertains. My buddy John Nemo from LinkedIn Riches says it this way, the money is in the mailbox. And that's 100% truth. Your email, it's your crown jewel for your practice because you own your email list and you control the content that goes into those emails. With email, people are watching, they're subscribing because they want to, because your content is valuable. It speaks to them and it's answering their questions and it's personal to them. It's like you're speaking to them through your email. They don't like to be pitched or anything in emails. And sadly, a lot of practices I see doing that. I hope yours is not. So when it comes time to buy, or hire you as their plastic surgeon, it'll be because people love you and people got to know you through your content and your emails. They feel comfortable with you. And again, enough to pick up that phone and call and say, yep, I want that consultation. So here is a graphic. <laughs> My buddy Joe Kalinowski from the Content Marketing Institute here in Cleveland put together a few years back for an article they had on pretty much the same topic, um, rented land and own land. And on the left, you'll see what is rented land? That is, you know, LinkedIn connections, your Twitter subscribers, YouTube followers, Instagram followers, and even YouTube. But I'll talk about YouTube here in a little bit. Your website, it's your online home for your practice, and it should be the hub for all of your content. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't ever use social media. Of course, you should use social media because you need to bring brand awareness to your practice because you constantly want to be driving people who find you on social media back to your content home, which is your website. But you should never use it as your exclusive way to build your audience or reach your audience. I get it. It's easy to do. It's easy to put up a post. Uh, I know you're busy. All practices are busy. And it's just easy to do. And let's just face it, your content on these social media channels, it really won't be seen for a long time if people just don't see it within the first couple of hours. And if you're posting good content on social media, especially Facebook, it goes away in a matter of hours. So just remember that. But this should be your content home. It should always be your website, your online office, essentially. Just remember your content home should not exclusively be Facebook. It should not be Instagram. It should not be LinkedIn. It should not be Pinterest. It should not be Snapchat. Again, all of these platforms are great to for brand awareness and to draw people back to your website. And as I said, you're really only reaching a small number of followers that you have on these platforms. Facebook especially, it's a very, very small fraction of people that follow you will, that will actually see your content. And as I said, after a few hours, it, it just goes away. Besides Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, they're all in it for the money. They're in it to make money. There's a paid side to all of these platforms, which could help your practice. And if you've used the paid side, especially with Facebook and Instagram, you see, yep, it does work in a lot of cases. But remember, with your organic content, your non-paid content, they'll change the rules on you, these platforms, because it, they'll do what's best for their platform. It's a business. They won't do what's best for your practice. So again, your website, this is where your very best content should be living. And remember that you own your website, 
you own the content on the website, you own your email list, you own any books or eBooks that you publish, create content that's extremely valuable, useful and helpful. And the number one platform to do that is video because that's where emotional connections happen. Remember, you do not own the social media platform. You don't own the content on the platform, even though you've posted it, and you don't own the audience on that platform. However, this is a big however, actually. If you don't have a YouTube channel right now, you should, because you're losing business right now to your competitors this very minute. YouTube is the number one social media platform exception because it's a great place, number one, to house your videos. With YouTube, you can actually house that video on YouTube and embed that on a page on your website with other valuable content that's there. And again, they're hosting it. There will be no buffering and it'll look professional and it'll look great. And it's a good place to house your videos. Second, if you didn't know this, Google owns YouTube. So as a plastic surgeon, it's equally important to be found on YouTube as it is on Google. You need to be found on YouTube. Now, why is that? Well, because the more people that watch your videos on YouTube, and this is where this is a different social media platform from all of the others, because once they start watching your videos, they'll engage with them and they're watching more. And YouTube, the algorithms, um, the artificial intelligence behind it, they see how many minutes, how many hours people are spending watching your videos on your YouTube channel. And once that happens, your chances of your videos crawling up the list and you've seen the search if you've never seen search on YouTube you'll see that the videos are on one side and you'll see how many views and how many watches but as people start watching your videos longer you're gonna creep up that list to the top and videos live on YouTube forever unlike Facebook or Instagram as I said that content goes away after a few hours not on YouTube as a matter of fact Videos that remain relevant and do remain relevant over a long period of time on YouTube, especially if they're good videos and good content and people are watching them, those videos will continue to work for you and your practice for many, many years to come. I've seen it. Okay, here's a YouTube pro tip. After you've created your channel, start thinking about one, maybe two procedures that you're really good at procedures that make you a lot of money and procedures that you gush over when you talk about these procedures to patients they know you're good at it and they know that you can help them and this is where the trust starts to come in especially with video then you can create a playlist around those procedures to put those videos in what's a playlist essentially a playlist is a video folder where you'll take these videos on a particular topic like a breast augmentation or rhinoplasty or whatever that happens to be and you put those videos inside of those folders to keep people on your YouTube channel so they continually watch your videos so for example you can create a playlist as I said around breast augmentation rhinoplasty whatever procedures that you want to start talking about then you can create videos around those topics you can add that video and those videos to that particular playlist or video folder if you will so when a person comes to your YouTube channel and they access that playlist they'll sit there and watch all of your videos again YouTube loves when people are on your channel they love when they keep watching your videos and engage with them the longer the watch time the more search engine optimization juice if you will your videos will start to garner over a period of time then what you want to do is create several more videos around that particular procedure and create videos of common questions that patients ask during the buying journey. And with those playlists, you can move videos up and down. So in other words, you can create um, the first video, maybe the most common question, the second, the third, the fourth, as people start asking those questions and you know what they are, the patient coordinators, you're, you know what they are. And it's just leading them down the path to purchase. And really, really important with every single video incorporate story how do you do that well talk about a past patient because the person watching that video believe me has had the same problems the same thoughts the same aspirations that others in the past that you have served create story it is so important into every single video that you make your videos will be in one place on YouTube so people won't have to go searching around for them and that way once again you are leading people down the path to purchase and that's a good thing so best of all, this is where you can create calls to actions within your videos, especially the deeper they go into that path to purchase and the more 
you know, video, um, the more questions that people ask towards when they finally make the decision to have that procedure done, that's when you start creating calls to actions to head back to your website for more exclusive content that can help them. And this is where you start capturing email addresses and people will want to be subscribing to your content. So this can work for you 24 seven, 365. And when you're not in the office, and this will create a new source of revenue for you and your practice. It is no longer build it and they will come. Nope, that just doesn't happen anymore. And But if you and your plastic surgery practice focus on high quality, procedure-based video content, you'll acquire subscribers for your lifetime and think about patient lifetime value. Well, before I go, I wanted to say thank you so much for watching the video. And if you like what you see here on my channel, please consider subscribing. If you're on YouTube, the button is down here somewhere. And if you just hit that button, you'll be notified when I upload a new video with tips and best practices on how to create emotional connections with your patients online for your plastic surgery practice. And one more final thank you and my gift to you. If you're on YouTube, you'll see a card up here. Otherwise, there'll be a link in the description over to my website. And I would love to give to you absolutely free my video on the Plastic Surgeon's Eight Step Guide to Creating a Differentiating Online Persona absolutely free. Once again, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time in our next video.